Welcome, PBA LBC Bowlers. Once again, I'm Neil Stremmel, the PBA Director of Rules and Equipment, and today I am joined by PBA Superstar, PBA Hall of Famer, Norm Duke. Norm, how are you doing today? Man, I'm doing great, Neil. Nice Arr. to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for being on. Hey, so we are at the LBC National Championships, and people come here to bowl, and when they come here to bowl, they're probably bowling on a pattern that they haven't bowled on before. They're bowling in a center that they don't know the topography, they don't know the friction. They get five minutes of practice. In your experience, what do you do to figure out the lanes and attack the lanes and get a game plan going? Wow, in five minutes. <laughs> five minutes. All right, five minutes is not a long time, so you have to make really good use of your time. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pay attention to the distance of the pattern. And the pattern here at the National Championships is 29, no, no, it's 29 mils. It's 29 40, mils. It's 42, 42 feet. feet. 42 feet. So I'm going to apply the rule of 31 to that 42 feet. So I automatically, my senses say 11 board at 42 feet. That's kind of where the pattern suggests that it wants my bowling ball. Knowing that, now I'm going to do whatever it is I think I need to do to basically eliminate a lot of possibilities. It's not necessarily about hitting the right one first. It's about eliminating the wrong ones immediately. So if I get five minutes of practice, I'm going to grab a bowling ball that hooks kind of medium. My very first shot, I'm going to swing it out toward the gutter, probably try to hit first or second board, keeping it on the lane. That way I get to see a little bit about how much friction is actually on the outsides. Because if that ball goes toward the gutter and checks up, then I know already I've got some hook that I can play with. There, therefore, I'm eliminating a lot of that, well, play the hold, play the hold kind of thing. I'm going to make sure, though, I know how much that lane hooks from the outside. i got to know where I can get it back from. If not, well, then all of that area becomes virgin territory in my mind, and I'm afraid of it. It might be the most useful tool on the lane, and I would be afraid of it. So I've got to expose a couple of balls to the outsides just to see how much friction there is. Now then, I want to know how much lay I have as well. So I'm even going to get second or third shot. I'm going to get a kind of a bigger ball, and I'm going to go right up the second or third arrow and see if that ball tends to jerk off the back end, or does it just lay down? If it lays down and I've got a big ball in my hand, then chances are I'm going to see some friction to the right with that big ball because it hooks more than most of the others, right? And then I can get myself in a situation where I may have some right room and left room all at the same time. Having right room and left room on the PBA Tour at the same time is, you know, you just don't get that very <laughs> often, right? And not until at least the lanes break down. On the fresh, it's kind of really, really tough out there to determine from where you're going to play. Now, on this pattern, we have a little more, it's kind of softer. It's not quite as hard as most of the PBA patterns, so you're going to feel that friction to the right when you swing it out there. And that is what is going to make your mind up from where you're going to start your ball getting to that drive. That is, that is a fantastic plan, um, a good way of looking at things. You know, this particular pattern, it's about five to one. So it's not a, it's not a house shot, but it's definitely not a PBA shot. So you're going to have a little bit of room. Like you said, you might have a little right and left room, which would be, you know, fantastic if you can find it. Like, like we said, you got five minutes to find that. So try to figure that out. So then the next question I have for you, Norm. Mm -hmm. All right, so you've figured out your initial pair. You had some five minutes of practice. And now, just like in the PBA, just like we're doing here at the National Championships, you move for your second game. So now you're on a whole new pair. How do you kind of figure that out? What's, what's your game plan when you move to game number two and, and each game from there on? Right. You know, game number two is predominantly about game number one. If you had 279 out of the gate, game number two, there's not going to be a whole lot of adjustments there. Maybe one or two to the left with your feet, and that's your first shot. But if you start off with 145, there's going to be a lot going on in game number two. Okay, so depending on what happened in game number one, game number two is essentially you're directed. Your behavior is directed by your performance in game number one. And um, look, uh, 
a lot of people are going to make uh, stink about who are you following, uh, how many people through non-reactive, and what's the rev rate, and is there two-handers? And listen, one game is not going to kill game number two's shot. It's not going to kill it. It's certainly going to change it as it does every game, but it's not going to kill it. So if you open up with a good game, don't let something that happened prior to you affect what you're doing yet. Maybe that's uh, game three, four, and five there when you see what is the behavior of the whole facility more so than that pair. Another thing people ask me all the time is they say, man, what is your worst pair in, in the world, in the whole world? <laughs> I don't even remember one pair of lanes in my life. Maybe 11 and 12 at the U.S. Open at Carolier is the only pair I remember. Why is that? It's because the remembering bad pairs, our good pairs, has always treated me terrible. I want no memory whatsoever in my head about how a pair is playing or how it's scoring or, or, or how the other guys actually played on it. Some people, uh, uh, tour pros, they find it very interesting to to, uh, to to them to figure out, well, this pair I've always played good on for my five years here and all that. No, no, I've always wanted it. Let your ball be your guide and let it be your guide this year, next year, and the next. As soon as I remember what's going on on that pair from years prior, uh, typically it's changed just enough, Neil, to yeah. where it's not the same anymore. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. Topography changes with temperature and humidity. Obviously, the pattern can change. Different oils, different machines, yeah. different people oiling them. Uh, there are so many factors that we just don't know that I think that the memory of what pairs have done with you in the past is now counterproductive. Ah, that's excellent insight. So if you're a tournament bowler, whether you're bowling our championships here at Bolero Wauwatosa near Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or you're going to your state tournament or whatever tournament you're going to and you're preparing this is, this is uh, advice from a PBA Hall of Famer. Don't get stuck in your head. Let the lane tell you what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, if you can learn anything before you get there, like the pattern length, that'll help you in your first shot. And you can understand the volume, that'll help you a little bit too. But really, let your ball be your guide. Yeah, and, and lastly, listen, when you're playing on a house condition, typically you have a whole lot more volume of oil in the middle. Your rate of of uh, adjustments are half or a third, maybe even a fifth of the pace that the tour players see. Now we have less volume in the front area, so we'll pull that oil off so much quicker. When you get here to the national championship uh, oil pattern, remember, nimble, keep your feet moving left. It's gonna be quicker than your, your house shot. You're gonna get deeper than your house shot because there's not as much of that puddle. It's not, a, a pattern that's going to uh, test all of your spare game because you can't throw strikes, but what it will do is it will break down quicker than you're used to. That's a fair point as well. All right, well, thanks, everybody. I hope this helps you in your tournament preparation, whether it's here or a local tournament for you. Um, good luck out there, good, good bowling, good scoring, and don't forget to support our sport. Thank you.